Hello and welcome back to another video of the How To series, where I explain you the fundamentals of the game. Now that you have the Master the Exploration Age, we come to the Commerce Age. And there we have two parts. First we have on how to defend the base. And secondly we have how to attack the base. In this topic we are on how to defend your base. How do you do that? That's what I'm going to show you today. So, first things first. I've prepared three bases, two good, uh, one good example and two bad ones. And I will explain you why. Here is the first base. This is one base many new players build. Everything is really cramped up here. Which makes defending really hard. It's a pain. Okay, let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say you want units to come down here. Let's delete those. Let's say you want units to go from your barracks down to the south. To, let's say, defend units that are popping out from the stable. Or your villagers are gathering here wood and you want to defend a raid. See how long it takes for this unit to arrive on the destination point. And this is only the first thing out of many. Next thing, imagine if... Let's group them into the first group. This is the enemy, right? And you are the defender. You went a little greedy, so you only have... 10. And the opponent has 16. The opponent is pushing a Rex. Okay, let's say you have little less. Let's say you have 5. You completed your first batch. Enemy is pushing you with a bunch of units. You're trying desperately to defend. And you can... You need each and single unit you can spare. And look what happens if you want to get your next batch out. The opponent Clicks them up one by one, three are down, and you essentially wasted half a bet of the units. Meanwhile, you mainly, maybe killed like one unit. Now it's 15 against 7. Huge difference. And then kiting is also going to be very difficult. Sometimes crews up because maybe you'll think you can go through a certain gap. Let's say, for example, you can't go through this gap, but you can't. Because the Rex is... Oh, it actually does. Okay, <laughs> that's a bad example then. But in some occasions, where some buildings look, you can go through, but you can't. So the units go a weird path around it. And another reason why this build, this base, is not great. Is if you click Alt on Artisi, you can see the town center range. You don't want to use lose buildings for free, especially in the early game. So the opponent can just go here. It's like, oh, okay, you have military. I go back and just siege your houses. He goes there. He sieges your first house. That's gone. And the reason why this is bad is. Usually, yeah, I have like 50 population right now, right? And imagine I have 25 villagers, which is quite usual in the mid-game. And you have 20 units. And you let your opponent siege this house for free. Not only do you lose housing population, you also give the opponent extra XP. You saw this XP right there, when I deleted the house. The killed XP is 40. It's like one fifth of a shipment that early into the game. So you like lose everything and gain nothing. You lose 10 population space. You have the risk of not being able to make military units. Okay, so let's say you have close to equal numbers. The opponent is seeing that you have more, so he's retreating. 
However, you can train more units than you because you are. He sieges down your buildings, your houses, so he can have reinforcements. Whether you can't because you are hiding your TC, you can't. You don't have enough wood to build houses. So what happens is, the opponent goes back. He is getting his reinforcements, and now suddenly, the tides have turned. It's like, yeah, yes, yeah, doesn't have units, but surprise, surprise, your opponent does have more units, so you have to run <laughs> for your life, and this is never good. So this is why this base is bad. Now we come to the second base. This base is much better. You see, everything is in range. Of the town center. However, it is still the same argument that these little spaces here can make pathing really awkward. Rising is melee calf. Let's say you have skirms in the corner right here, and this is your opponent's calf, right? You're trying to retreat. However, your opponent is keen. He's smart. He's blocking every exit, so now you can't retreat really. Without doing heavy losses. Because this path is blocked. And you can't go through there with your entire formation. So the only way out is right through the calf. Which your skirms will never survive. Or you delete the house and can retreat that way. So the same reasoning as the first base. But now we come to the third base. Why is this base good? There's like bunch of gaps here. How should I defend this? Not to explain that. You have to know how to wall. We have three walls. First one is the wall pillar itself. The second one is the short wall pillar. The short wall. And the third one is the large wall. I'm explaining this to you. You will see in a second. You see players doing the walls, the pillarless walls, right? Where they build a wall, delete all the pillars. And you realize, oh wait, that's a gap. Why is there a gap? There's a gap because it's hard to explain, it's easier to show. So how you, this is how you not want to build a base, uh, your wall. We stretch it out that far. How you want to build the wall is you drag the wall and drag them as soon as you see the short wall segment. As soon as you see the wall, the short wall segment becoming a long one. You want to build the wall, and that way, you will not have any gaps. And I think you can see how the hitboxes here overlap. Yeah. So you can extend the wall a little bit, Zimmermann. if you want to be efficient, and you will still not have a huge gap. This, there's the you still can't go through. There are two reasons for that. I have built two wall segments. Both are equal long. Both have equal the amount of walls. And soon you will see the difference on why the pillarless walls has such a huge advantage. Not only do you save <laughs> not only do you save 50 wood by deleting the pillars, you also save a lot of building time. Because after each wall, the villager has to build the wall segment. 
the pillar that is separating each of the pillars of the war segments. Even though she tried to help the settler a bit. But you see the difference, right? It's faster, it's cheaper. No downsides not to use it. There is one downside, actually. And that is that it is a little micro-intensive on the initial build time. If you are on the really late game, it's not that much of an importance as it is in the early game. Because in the late game you have to m manage your army much more, since that's where your focus is at. So now that you know how to wall and what the benefits of this are, how do you build this into a fortification? Simply, you use, this, you use a house as barrier. So with 5, with 10, with 15 wood. You can build yourself a little cage here. And what this cage enables you to do is to send units shipment, such as Jaegers, if I've done a good job here walling, and those Jaegers pop up here. And what this enables you to do is that cavalry is going to have a much harder time to reach those units. So the enemy saw, oh my god, he's H3. I need to punish him. The enemy is imagining he's doing a calf semi fast fortress, right? He made calf. He's trying to arrest you. But you had an unlucky timing. You sent your set your Jaegers. But your Jaegers can attack the Ulans. But the Ulans can't attack your Jaegers. See? And if you defend it yourself, you can either build a gate for 50 wood or you'll just delete the wall segment and then push out that way. And another big thing is the wrecks and military placement. If you are fighting against aggressive opponents, let's say Aztec, Russia, Haudenosaunee, Ottomans, even British, they can also be quite aggressive. With Thif, they, which they're gonna push you really fast and really hard, it's usually the better option to put a military buildings behind your base and not in front of it. The first reasoning is that A, it takes more time for the units of the opponent to reach a military building which allows them to siege it down. So first, you save time. Second, it is much more safe for you to defend this. Because it makes the opponent really vulnerable if you get reinforcement out of your TC, let's say a shipment or Minuteman, and from your racks as well. And since you can snare them too, it makes them even harder to commit to your base. And another positive that is that you can it make much more easier to cut off reinforcements of your enemy. So the sieging units are trying to siege down your barracks. And he is reinforcement coming from his proxy racks that he has put down in the middle of the map. However his forces are split, his carry on the left side and his light infantry on the right side which makes it much easier for you to pick off the one or the other unit rather than if the barracks would have been over the, on the right side. On that way, you couldn't cut off his reinforcements. And though you fought the entire military force compared to only half of it. So, now with all the building out of the way, let's come to the military sector. First of the TC, if you break the down, first you have to know what the town center even is. A town center is not more than a house and an outpost combined. What I mean by that, if 
is if your village, if your village a villager, if you garrison a villager inside this town center, you see it has a ranged attack of 9. And this scales up to 90. And each additional villager you put in adds another 9 to the range attack. 54, 63, 72, 81, and 90. And if you put any more villagers in the sound than 10, it literally does nothing. You can have 50, you can have 40 villagers in the town center. It still has a 90 attack. Why is this important, you ask? It's because I mentioned earlier villager second. Because the goal of the opponent is to idle your economy. Right? And the reason why herding is so important here as well is that you can have your herds right down of your town center so that you can juggle your villagers out to garrison the coin, to garrison the hunts. Since your goal is to not have any more than 10 villagers at a time in the town center. Only if you really have to, you want to have more than 10 in your town center. Because 10... Imagine that 10 villagers can only fit in the top here. On the top section of the town center and shooting. And the other 16 are sitting down in the town center itself and then playing cards or something and idling chatting. Waiting for the rushers to go away. Next we come to the Minuteman, aka the Militia. Why do I call the Minuteman? I call the Minuteman because they take a minute to reach to 1 HP. And they only lose HP and not attack, as you can see. HP goes down, attacks remain. And you can also count them once out of your town center. And you can use a militiaman to repair the opponent. The usual reaction of the opponent is if he sees militiaman, oh, I need to go back. That's why it's so crucial to save them and only use them when you have to. And if you want to be even better with this, is to time the militiaman pop with a unit shipment. So let's say you have a unit shipment in. Your opponent is attacking with 10 calf and 8 crossbows. Man, that's too much. Let's say they're attacking with a calf shipment of 4 and 8 crossbows. They are pinning you down. But you are keen, you are smart. You are waiting for the crossbowman to be almost there. So that you can call the Minuteman. Get the crossbows and here are the Minutemen. That allows you to repel the opponent in it. No, that's too many units, I need to go back. But what if you do the same scenario on a different case? So, similar scenario. Similar scenario. You have 8 crossbowmen and 4 cavalry attacking your base. They're pinning you down. You have a shipment on the way. But instead of waiting, you call the Minutemen ASAP. So they're out. They are attacking the crossbowmen. And during the fight, you manage to take down a Yulan and three crossbowmen. However, you use you lose four of a minute man. And they're losing HP second by second. Now the shipment arrives in the wrong spot. <laughs> in the wrong spot. Okay, let's say this is the shipment. But now your shipment arrives. And you only have five units remaining. And those crossbows can easily deal with the drop sortness. And those militiamen are essentially useless. And they can focus fire with one crossbow each. And then you only have your drop sword, swordness, which are essentially any calf. And with proper micromanagement, 
Both crossbows can't kite your double soldiers for days. So you lost essentially everything for nothing. Whereas on the other defense, you saved everything. Because the enemy didn't even want to engage with the militiamen and the crossbowmen combined. Another important key factor are your villagers itself. Villagers are, are a very powerful tool to defend your economy and base. The reason why is the uh, hand attack. You have 10 base hand attack and 150 base health. But this can be further improved by Blunderbuss, which gives you 3 more hand attack and range attack. As well as Great Coats, which increases your villager hit points by 35%. See, now you have 1300 attack and 203 HP. And if you have a look at the tags of the villagers, you see it's, it's only villager and land villager. Why is that important? Because most units are relying on tags to do damage. For example, the crossbowman does double the damage against light infantry and a little more damage against heavy infantry. And if you have a Lancer Cap, for example, those are also reliant on heavy infantry. Because if you have for example on Lancers, they have a 3 times multiplier against heavy infantry. However, villagers are still only villagers. That's why they are so powerful. You may ask, but what should I do if my opponent is pushing me with two Falconets? Well, first you want to focus the Falconet with your town center. However, the town center itself does only half the damage to artillery than it does to other units. Reason being this tag, artillery. So the tag itself goes down to 45. And this one is then again decreased by 75%. So it does take a long time to add on the Falconets. However, if you have a look on the villagers, Those have 13 tech and no negative multiplayers whatsoever. So if you put 10 out, they only need 2 swipes and the Falconet gets deleted. And then another 2 swipe and the second Falconet is deleted. However, you may lose 6 villagers for the cost of it. But now you go back up into the base, into your town center, and you completely re repel the push of the opponent. They may have still some calf or some infantry remaining. This is everything you have to know about how to defend your base. You know about calling the militiamen and time it with your military shipment. You know how to and how not to build your base. How to utilize your villagers, how to wall, how to not to wall. <laughs> I think Ravnik, again, a lot. He got me a lot of insights on how a base should look like, how a base should not look like. And he had me a lot with this topic. So thanks to him again. And I will see you then in the next topic, where I will teach you about how to attack the enemy. Until then, bye.